In today's video, I want to review a first time home buyer product. What's actually not just for first time home buyers, this is general home buyers that qualify that can give you, the buyer, more power so you can get a better loan, get into a house sooner and make me that carne asada that you promised me like a year ago. This loan product is called the Home Ready Mortgage by Fannie Mae. How does this Fannie Mae Home Ready Mortgage work? How do you qualify for it? Is it good? Is it bad? What are my thoughts? Let's go. First, I want to say all the resources I'm going to use in today's video will be available in the description below. Um, so that way, before you go talk to a lender, you know about it, you know what you're talking about. And you can, instead of uh, waiting for them to educate you, you can ask them questions to help you interpret basically what's on these documents. All this is publicly available anyway, so you should be able to get your bearings at least before you talk to anybody. So anyways, let's talk about this. Home Ready by Fannie Mae. So first of all, this is a very nice uh, self-portrait to me. I think it's pretty accurate. Um, looks just like me just getting out of the shower you know just just you know getting my pump on so let's get to it um here's the basics of a home ready so first and foremost it says here according to the document i'm reading right now which once again i will share with you guys you can qualify as low as a 620 credit score um however with a conventional product because this is a conventional loan which we'll talk about the, be the benefits and cons of that later they can be pretty punitive based on your credit history so if you're in the 620 to 640 range yes you can qualify for this loan however they're probably not going to give you favorable terms with no credit score pmi your interest rate, et cetera, et cetera. So really, I really recommend you try to be in the 680, 700 plus range. However, per the document, you can go as low as 620. So you should just have an underwriter or lender check it out to see how it works for you. Now, if you have to go into manual underwriting, it says here, there's a minimum credit score of 660 for one unit properties and a credit score minimum of 680 for two to four unit properties. That's right, you can use this for ADUs or single family properties and whatnot. Uh, the second thing is it's available only for people who have an income that's based off 80% of the median income. And how you find that out is there is a link, once again, that will be available for you guys below where we can actually look that up and we can determine that. So here I'm looking in the general area in Phoenix, I can just zoom in, you click it and it tells you here, 100% of the area median income is 79,000, here 80% of the loan median income, LI 63,200, and it tells you quite clearly there, that is the home ready income limit. So as long as you make under that amount in this city, you would be able to make it work. If you're in an area that's rural or high needs rural, I believe they give you a little more, you know, incentive. So definitely worth checking you guys out if you're buying in a not so populated area. So the good thing about this loan product, it is, it's actually a three 3% down product, not a 5%. So a lot of people think with conventional, the lowest you can go is 5%. That is not the case. With this specific loan, you can go 3%. Now, however, there is a cost. The, the interest rate does increase slightly, I believe, but what, from what I've seen, it's very minimal. Um, and you can easily be combated by a very small interest rate buy down or something along those lines. That's how it was at least last time I saw it with a client of mine. It could change, but from what I experienced, very minimal difference. The debt to income ratio is about 50%. And what what I really like about this product is it's, it allows non-occupant borrowers. So for those who need a parent's help, a uncle's help, a brother's sister's help, a freaking YouTuber's help, that's right. I'm going to start co-signing everybody's loans So get ready. Um, you, you can add them and yes, you have to make sure they know the risk associated with it, but they don't necessarily have to occupy the house. Now there's a lot more little things. So we're actually going to just head over to the document so we can kind of see they do allow adjustable rate mortgages. What I like about it is the down payment sources don't have to be from one person. You, they are very generous with gifts and grants and community seconds or like family members are, are going to basically help you with the loan. There's no minimum requirement from your funds. So literally someone can help you with those funds. You don't have to have a minimum amount. You will have to do home ownership counseling. You will have mortgage insurance, which we'll talk a little bit later. And it is based off your essentially your risk factor and it is cancelable. And of course, the good thing is if you have student loan debt, uh, essentially the payment that they're going to use is the one that's being reported on the credit report. Um, if the credit report does not identify the payment amount, the lender can either use 1% of the loan balance or a calculated payment that will fully amortize a loan. Do an interest rate buy down, a temporary one or a permanent one. I believe permanent one as well. I think a client of mine did it. Uh, I'll make sure to double check that, but you can at least do a temporary one where you put money down to temporary reduce your interest rate for a few years to help you, you know, get started essentially. So really a lot of these things are, are favored towards a starter first time home buyer, someone who's looking to buy their first house and may, might be in a position where they're fully 100% ready on their own, but they're getting guidance or assistance from parents who love them and, and give them unconditional love because not all of us receive that. But if you do receive that, congratulations. Biggest pro, pro of this loan, 100%, is it's conventional. 
Um, I've talked about this in past and, and a lot of people still are asking how, why is the conventional way better? Well, you have a much higher success rate with conventional. It's no secret, sellers prefer conventional. It makes you appear more solid, even though it may not be the case you're using a for a, a first time home buyer loan, uh, but it gives you the impression that you're a lot more. Here we're using my Phoenix Market Report Tracker, which I track every day. And if you're interested and you're in the Phoenix Market, you can go to HavierVidano.com and I think it's on the homepage. But you can see here, clear as day, we're tracking the percentages of the cash rates, conventional VA, FHA percentage, success rates. Conventional has always maintained above 50%. Only only barely starting to dip under uh, 50, 49.9, but uh, where it says FHA, where you're like six, 7% success rate, FVA is 5.8, 5.9% success rate. Um, so even though they're starting to dip slightly, conventional is still gonna give you a much better success rate to get your offer accepted. And just general, be happy with your first house. The second is your PMI, your mortgage insurance is not going to last forever. Um, PMI is not perm, hopefully. You guys know what that means. Now with FHA, they don't require a PMI, but they require two things, an upfront mortgage insurance premium that they will either finance in the loan, so you might see your loan amount goes up higher, and of course, a mortgage insurance premium that's being paid monthly. With conventional, your PMI will only last until you're a 20% loan to equity. And it does say specifically here on their actual page, 90% loan to value, cancel MEI, once borrows equity reaches 20%, restrictions apply. So this is great for those who are looking to be in a long-term house where they're not gonna be refinancing. Like a lender's gonna tell you just refinance every other year just cause you know, they wanna make that money. But if you get into this loan and you're in it for a while, you will eventually pay that PM, get to the point where that PMI will no longer be applicable and you'll save that $100, $200 a month, whatever is your PMI, depending on your credit score and your risk, essentially. But of course, conventional does have its cons. Like I said earlier, they are punitive of your credit scores and your basically your financial history. So you really, this only really favors those who have decent credit. If you've made a lot of mistakes in your past, you know, you're gonna have to really consider between conventional and FHA, or sorry, home ready and FHA, because the terms might not be very favorable if you are in the 620, 630, 640 range. So favors decent credit scores. You wanna make sure that you're in a good solid position. Um, so even though, yes, this is low 620, I really do recommend you guys have yourselves a, a decent financial a, a position where not only you have extra money saved for like a good savings cushion, but your credit score is actually solid. 700 plus I think would be preferred. Ow, sorry, but my foot fell asleep. <laughs> I know you're looking into loans right now, but listen, you really want to make sure that you have your budget in line, you know, your cash to close, you know, you just want to know before you go talk to a lender, can I even afford to buy a house? All you got to do guys, go to, go to HavierDonald.com slash resources. I got a lot of nice little calculators there for you to use just perfectly made by me for my clients. And I make them now available to everybody to just help you. It gives you, just get you freaking on it. So get, get yourself a few calculators and get yourself ready. Now I'm going to keep wincing in pain here. Okay. I think I, I think I'm good. You guys ever get hit with the freaking deadly <laughs> uh, f falling asleep thing? I don't know, what is it called? Anyways, so let's go over the biggest pros and cons here, okay? So I think for sure the biggest pros and cons with, with pro, which we just went over, the fact that you go conventional just gives you so much more buying, not necessarily buying power, but ability to get your offer accepted, success power, if you will. Um, you're you're going to have a much harder time getting your offer accepted with FHA. And yes, that is very, very slightly changing as the market's shifting, but it's just historically have always done better. However, to combat that, con is going to be your basically the punitive nature of conventional loans. So we'll just put punitive here to go over that point. So it's, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna, if you haven't made great decisions, if you haven't been preparing the right way, you're gonna get hit with harsher terms. You're gonna get hit with everything. With the rate already being kind of higher with Home Ready, it's gonna definitely even hurt more if your credit score is a little bit lower. Second biggest pro that I see is the fact that it's a lower down payment, only needing 3%. It really opens up your ability. So if you if you have been saving 5%, um, you can, still use 5%, but now you have those extra two points for closing costs. You have those extra two points for an interest rate buy down. You have, or just if you wanna save it, whatever the case may be, you can still save 5% and still put yourself in a stronger position. Now, this means that you have to save the 5%. So that's why I always say, I, th I think I'm starting to say this as now, 
your first time home buyer should have 5%. Even if you're lo looking to buy a 3% down payment loan, 3.5%, having that 5% just gives you more buying power and gives you more flexibility to really do what you want with the loan and, and have, or just have that extra security after you close. So the lower down payment gives you that in power, but it requires you to have the will to make sure to save that extra two points. And once again, that's very, um, privilege of me to just say hey just save more money i get it it's more difficult but your goal your your, your when you're setting these financial goals it should still be around five percent to give you that power so it can actually be a pro and not a con now one of the cons is your interest rate will be higher i think previously when a client of mine was buying they were quoted 5.85 for standard five percent conventional and then six percent for uh, three percent conventional with a home ready program and then uh, they locked in the six percent and then three weeks later they're like hey i think we want to go to five percent well the rates have gone up at that point so home ready was like 6.2 and the conventional was like above six already so they're like well we'll stick stick where we got it right so they stuck with it and they used the extra money that they were going to use for the five percent to buy the rate down and they got better term yes your rate is higher but hopefully because you saved a little more with a down payment um you can hopefully combat it and, and, and buy it down slightly do you have a realtor yet no well if you need one Homeone.com slash Javier. Get yourself an agent referral. Doesn't matter if you're looking to buy next month or two months from now. Get going, meet with somebody, talk to them, figure it out, and let them be a good partner for you during your real estate process. All right? I gotta go. I guess, I mean, the pro and uh, this is kind of like a pro con situation, right? Um, ice cream, it's good, bad, it makes you fat. <laughs> uh, bro, is this this loan is really set up to, to be like, so for you to put you in a position to be helped, right? So if you have a good family like structure, you have good friends and family that are love you and they're like trying to get you into home ownership. This is a perfect loan where you're not necessarily depending on them for everything, but if they want to help with a piece of it, they can. And this loan is perfect for that. It's 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 meant for to be communal, right? To have a, a family member help you and raise you to get to that. But at the same time, that's also a con because not all of us have the privilege of having a loving family or having that support system. And it's tough for, for con, I'm going to put trauma because <laughs> for those that, re that have trauma and don't have that family support, it is tough. And uh, a lot of people don't have a, a dad or a mom that can help them or grandpa or grandma. So there's, I, I wish there was a little more help for that. I wish there was some kind of a grant program or something associated with that to help those folks. Um, because you know, it's, we're in a country where, you know, really the odds of having bad parents are probably higher than good parents, you know? So I don't know. I don't want to get into it. I'm gonna start crying. But basically if you're looking for a low down payment loan program, this seems to be a really solid option. I don't see how FHA would be better than this unless your credit score is like in the low 600s. So I'm going to give this one a two thumbs up. I really do think if you're in a position where you're in the higher 600s or low 700s and you're considering FHA or conventional and you don't have the five or 10%, this is something that you really need to look into. I think it's available to most lenders or at least local lenders. If your bank doesn't provide one, you might want to talk to a mortgage banker or lender. I would love to hear if any of you guys have any feedback. Maybe you got a shop around and you saw the, the ins and outs of the loan versus the other one if you end up using it or not using it we'd love to hear in the comment section to help any future people decide if they should use it or not thank you guys so much i appreciate your time make it a good day